So this painting is a tribute to our first president, George Washington, and I did it based on a famous portrait of his that he's standing. I changed it a little bit, made it my version, and that's, that's how it is. He was our first president. He was the commander-in-chief of the Continental Army during the American Revolutionary War, and he served two terms as the first U.S. president from 1789 to 1797. He was raised in Virginia. He fought in the French and Indian War. And during the American Revolution, he led the colonial forces to victory over the British and became a national hero. In 1787, he was elected president of the convention that wrote the US Constitution. And he became the president two years later. He had a lot of foresight. He realized that the way he handled his job would make a difference to future America. And he handed down a legacy of strength, integrity, and national purpose. Less than three years after he left office, he died in Virginia on his plantation, Mount Vernon, at age 67. So this seems to be some kind of pillars with a, a curtain sprawled over it. I guess that was the style back then. And they had very ornate furniture. Beautiful wood carving. So he was born in 1732 on February 22nd. In the British colony of Virginia. He was the oldest of six children and he spent most of his childhood at Ferry Farm, the plantation of their family. After his father died when he was 11 years old, he helped his mother manage the plantation. And when he died in 1799, he owned around 300 slaves. But before he died, he became opposed to slavery, and in his will he ordered that his slaves should be freed after his wife's death. So we don't know much about him as a child, although he was from a wealthy family, so he likely was educated at home with private tutors. And... He became a surveyor as a teenager. He worked in that in that field since he was good with math. In 1751, he made his only trip outside America, and he contracted smallpox there, which he survived, obviously, but he was left with permanent facial scars because of that. So. He really had no previous military experience, but he was made the commander of the Virginia Militia and fought in the French and Indian War. Afterwards, he got married to Martha Dandridge Custis, who had two children of her own, and he was their stepfather, although they never had their own children together. So he had a very successful farm, he grew a lot of crops, had a lot of animals, and was not happy with the British, and thought it was in the best interest of the American colonies to declare their independence. So. He was named the Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army. And he was a very good general. His genius was in keeping the army together. The troops were not well tra trained. They lacked food, ammunition, and other supplies. Sometimes they didn't even have shoes in the winter. But he was able to motivate them and give them direction. And his leadership during the winter of 
1777 to 1778 at Valley Forge showed his greatness and his power to keep his men going. So over the course of the Eight Year War, they held up against the British and they were able to capture British troops under Cornwallis at the Battle of Yorktown and that officially ended the Revolutionary War and he was declared a national hero. So after they signed the Treaty of Paris between, the Great, Brit between Great Britain and the US, Washington believed he had done his job and he gave up command of the army went home to Mount Vernon to continue living his life as a fa family man and a farmer. But he was asked to attend the Constitutional Convention in Phil Philadelphia and to draft the Constitution. And his impressive leadership there convinced the delegates that he was the most qualified man to become the nation's first president. And he did not want to. That was the last thing he wanted to do. He wanted to have a private life at home and leave the governing of the new nation to other people. But everyone wanted him, so he gave in. And the first presidential election was held on January 7th, 1789, and he won <laughs> by a landslide. And John Adams, who received the second largest number of votes, became the first vice president. So Washington was 57 years old. He was inaugurated April 30th, 1789 in New York City. Because Washington DC, the future capital, was not built yet. So he lived in New York and Philadelphia. But he signed a bill while he was in office that established the future permanent U.S. capital along the Potomac River in Washington, D.C., which was named in his honor. So the United States was a small nation when he took office, 11 states, 4 million people, and there was no precedent for how we should conduct domestic or foreign affairs, but he realized that he he was the president who set the precedent for the future. So he tried to be fair, honest, tried to be have cordial, cordial relations with other countries, but also tried to stay neutral in their conflicts. And he nominated the first Chief Justice of the US Supreme Court, John Jay. He signed the bill establishing the first national bank, the Bank of the United States, and set up his own presidential cabinet. Thank you for watching me paint our first president and have a great day.